Beckles in Suffolk. Go ahead, James. Thanks for hanging on. Hi, George. Good Hi. to talk to you. And you, my friend. I couldn't disagree with you more over Iran, though. Okay. Um, there's several options on the table, and the only real feasible option is a strategic strike against the nuclear HQ in, in Just explain US. to people what you mean by strategic strike, James, in, uh, in real human terms. Well, the, I'd imagine that the mission would be conducted something like uh, a stealth bomber, possibly from Israel, dropping bunker buster missiles on northern Iraq, which will then essentially destroy the... In northern Iraq? In northern Iran, sorry, which will then destroy the uh, nuclear sites in northern... But Iran's nuclear strikes are more than 80 in number and scattered throughout the country. Uh, they're scattered throughout the country, but there is intelligence as to where they would be. Would that be the kind of intelligence that told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? Well, there would be no grounds for a strike on northern uh, Iran unless there was good grounds to believe that there were nuclear installations there. But we were told that there were good grounds for believing that the Iraqis had weapons of mass destruction. And that turned out, however good the grounds for suspecting, to be absolute balderdash. Well, you're talking there about an invasion which led to regime change. No, no, no. I'm just dealing, first of all, James, with the issue of intelligence. You're telling me that this will be done and uh, the uh, anodyne, or if you'll forgive me saying so, Orwellian phrase that you used was a strategic strike, which is, of course, code for large amounts of high explosives raining down on people's heads. Now, you say you know where Iran's nuclear facilities are, although you didn't appear to know that there are more than 80 in number, and they're not in northern Iran, they're all over Iran. And then you tell me that that would be the target because of intelligence. Now, I'm sorry, James, but there will be people listening to this who don't know whether to laugh or cry at somebody like you, an intelligent man, coming on and repeating the mantra about intelligence when you know what you know now about the intelligence that led us into the disaster in Iraq, James. If I can answer that, George. Of course. If you're suggesting that there's going to be a full military invasion of Iran... No, I'm not suggesting that. James, I'm not suggesting that. But what I'm telling you, and I promise you on this, and I hope you never have to phone me up and say that I was right, I'm promising you this. Do not imagine that Iran will treat a strategic strike any differently from a full-scale invasion. Trust me on this, James. I know what I'm talking about. If we bomb Iran, Iran will bomb us back. And amongst the places it will bomb us is here in the center of London. Innocent people will die. Don't imagine for one second that the deaths will be restricted to Iranians in the north of Iran or anywhere else. Any attack on Iran will be met by a full-scale response by Iran everywhere and anywhere. Trust me on that, James. Which is why we must disable it from having nuclear weapons. Well, you say that, but I wonder, living in Suffolk, if you're just maybe imagining you'll be safe from being disabled yourself. But let me tell you, as someone who lives in London, who represents a hundred thousand souls in London, who lost constituents the last time an underground train blew up, let me tell you, there'll be a lot of disabled people in London in return for your disablement of Iraq's, uh, sorry, Iran's nuclear power plants, which are absolutely legal, which they have as much right to develop as we do, and any attempt to bomb Iran, which you're attempting to sanitize with all your military talk, any attempt to bomb Iran will not be one strategic strike on one place in the north of Iran. It will have to be hundreds of strategic strikes on more than 80 places, even if it's only restricted to the nuclear uh, plants. And there's every reason to believe in the wake of the American statement, criminalizing, making terrorists of the Revolutionary Guard in Iran, which is 150,000 people, which is an indispensable part of Iran's military forces, as terrorists, there's no reason to believe that they're not going to be attacked as well. And I, I'm telling you, James, and you seem strangely unmoved by it, Iran is not a broken-backed country. Don't imagine this is some cheap, broken-down, darkest African impotent, defenseless country that you are so, so 
uh, 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 somnolently uh, seeking to uh, talk us into bombing. Iran will respond ferociously everywhere if we attack Iran. Self-defense, James. Uh, the real nightmare scenario is the prospect of mullahs in Iran having weapons... Well, tell me, James, why is that more of a nightmare scenario than Ariel Sharon having hundreds of nuclear weapons? Or George Bush having thousands of nuclear weapons? Or General Musharraf, who's one bullet away from Islamic revolution in Pakistan, having nuclear weapons? Or the government of India, which refuses uh, to live up to its uh, promises under the Non-Proliferation Treaty? Why are some people, James, allowed to have nuclear weapons, but others are not? The threat that we face from Iran is far, far greater than the threat we face from the United States. Why do we face a threat from Iran? What has Iran ever done to us? Iran hasn't invaded another country in more than 300 years. And 300 Spartans saw them off. What's the threat from Iran to us? What have they ever done to us, James? Well, Iran, if you recall, fought a very brutal war against Iraq. If you... I can't believe that you just said that. Iran didn't fight a brutal war against Iraq. Iraq invaded Iran. Iraq invaded Iran using our weapons and with the support of our government. What do you mean they fought a brutal war against Iraq? They were invaded for God's sake. They were invaded, but they fought a very brutal campaign. Against what does that have to do with them being a threat to us for God's sake? We encouraged Iraq to invade them. And now you're using the fact that they fought hard to defend their country when it was invaded as a reason for us invading them. You're going to give me a heart attack, James. I better go on to another caller. Here's Andy in West Wickham. Go on, Andy. Uh, 